touching up let me uh, let me uh, just get what's uh, being done here real quick and then I'll turn this back over to Skyler when he's done okay this is gonna go down just a tiny bit more right there you're good You work in a nursery? I say you what? I got the uh I paid twenty bucks for how to go around. Uh-huh. And I made it. It looked like crap. <laughs> no, the, uh, and it didn't sell, but I had some people come up and say that they just moved in the area and they want to come out and make, make some rocks. Jim told, Jim told us that he was the worst class he's ever had. <laughs> when I took the course, he said, honestly, it means he said, it honestly, it's the worst class I've ever had. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever made a rock out there that looked like a rock. <laughs> I made it, it was a planter, and it was solid fill, yeah. heavy. Now, if you look at that, where the two uh, uh, panels meet in the middle there, this this is going to have to be mudded. This needs to be addressed. It's too obvious. But the installation of that is lickety quick. The the time that we'll spend fixing or seaming this together will be virtually minor compared to what normally would occur through installation of real or cultured stone. No, we don't use those. Dry release, what do you mean? Dry release powder for skin. We don't do that. Is it rock being made? You know, the skin? Oh, the skin? Yeah. Yeah, we sell skin. Did y'all sell the dry release? Or just the liquid release? Liquid. Yeah, I never. I don't like the dry release because it stays in the mud. The liquid release comes off. Yeah, we've been taking it off the acid a little bit, you know? It d doesn't matter. You it on, it no, but it's still, it's still not going to be any good. The powder release system is a flawed system in that it defiles the mud. Well, the problem I've been having is all the release agents that I've found that, that it melts my uh, latex skins. The latex ones you get Well, latex is the wrong rubber to be using. Yeah, well, that's what Rico Rock sells, so you have no. to use their... We got, we got skins that won't do that. Yeah, they got different rubbers. Like the silica, they don't work that. We use a variety of rubbers. Depends on what we're trying to do. Yeah. I got latex, well, I just... They took all the stuff out of here, but I got latex, I got silicone, and I got urethane. Yeah, well, like, it depends on what I'm doing, yeah, but silicone. I, I used to think so, but I think urethane's better. I used uh, plastic in several times. Can you use that? All right, we've got that corner and this corner, and of course the horizontal joint between we're going to be mudding. Kind of want to give a close up of the of the rock booth here. This is a trade show booth that we made. There's a lot of other applications. We have these panels available that uh, can be used for a variety of applications, but this is all made from our panels. Just cut and mud. Cut and mud. And it looks like they're just about adjust, done adjusting the uh, column rocks here. These are actually the outside corners. We're just realizing that four of them 
go around the column completely. And of course, we're going to have to touch this up. But is that a new type of wrench, guy? Just adjusting it now to get it all kind of torqued in. All right. What, what I saw Skyler doing when he was installing this, guys, one thing you have to think of, because we do allow for a little bit, like on the 16-inch, on the if you had a 16-inch column, we've given you an extra inch. So in other words, you need a half-inch space. You could probably use some shims, but leave it loose until you get it to where all pieces are there, and then you can snug up and adjust. But even that, uh, this is a, a pretty tight joint. What I didn't like, which I saw from afar, this is really visible. Okay, and we can touch that up. Now, if they would have put this the other way, uh, this top seems to have more of a rounded edge than this that's a bottom. It's more flattened, but we can touch that up. But that's ready to be uh, mudded. At this point, I wanted to go over these. These are real simple to install. If we could turn this, or Sky, unless you could get over here, this would probably be a better vantage point. Oh, we don't have to turn it. What we're going to do is we're going to pretend this is just out in the middle of the yard. We're just going to put a lamp post in here or a mailbox. I don't care what it is. We're just going to, we don't have a, a, a frame column to put it around. So what we'll do is we'll just take usually smaller pieces. Um, I thought about this after. I asked Daryl to do it, and he did exactly what I said. Give me a big piece of plywood that'll fit in there. When I was on site before, what I did was I cut um, littler pieces, okay? And I came in here and just screwed like right here, maybe one at the bottom, and then mudded the panel together from inside, you know, right here, and then let that dry and then took that uh, plywood off and then mudded the areas where I had the plywood. In other words, I'm going to seam that whole area. Now, another way around that instead of screwing is just put it together. We could put a strap around it, tighten it up, a ratchet strap. Uh, you were talking about shrink wrap. Uh, I don't know how adjustable that would be, but, you know, get it to where you want and then mud it. You know, we also take the uh, bailing wire, drill a hole here, drill a hole here, tie it together. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat, so to speak. Right now, for the purpose of uh, this class, we're just going to fit it together and then screw this together, and it'll be one. <laughs> and I'm really worried about, I'm not going to mud this together because I'd like to sell this panel. But I'm going to look at the joints with you, and we're going to look at, do we have any touch-up? How are we going to do it? And then I like the... I like the variety of rock that we're going to have with the waterfall, the bubblers, all these panels that we have. We have a lot of opportunity for you guys to hands-on. And also, I want to do um, different color schemes so that we can get a variety of understandings there. Also, incidentally, we have all the formulas. That, you never did send me your email for that. I was going to send you. but Yeah, well, we, oh, I, I lined you over the phone. But I got a sheet or sheets that have a lot of different colors. Uh, formulations on it so and again if you guys run into a problem where this lady wants brown rock and you don't know how to get there you give us a call send us an email photo we can line you out on what color to use what mixtures what applications to use so is that together it's really easier than they're making it look these guys have never touched these before and they don't know how to put them together no you know, it's such a tight fit that you got to get the pieces just, it's really tight. There you go. There you go. You're pretty good. Screw it. Now, again, we're going to go over the, the technique of taking the texture mixture, putting a little in there, letting it set up for a little bit, and then just strike it out, brush it in, and we'll be ready to stain. Today, I'm trying to get forth the building, installing the bulk shapes. You know, when I talked about boulders, I've always talked about it like, you know, give me a bulk shape. You're just looking for formation. Well, we've got formation here. Now we're going to be dealing with texture. 
You know, on those over there, we're still dealing with the formation, especially on those river rock corners. There's no formation there. So we, we couldn't even begin talking about texture. So today we're still going to focus on the building. As soon as we leave or depart this, we're going to start talking about the waterfall type of rocks or just rock boulders in general. We'll start building those. And I want to build a couple of bubblers. We've got enough panels here that I figured we'd divide you up.